Ah, I almost, almost stepped on and tripped over a part of a rug here on the floor. Well, welcome everybody. Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. This coming weekend, I'm going to be talking about forgiveness. What is it? How can we offer forgiveness? Before that, and this, this comes on the heels of Father Anthony's homily two weeks ago and Deacon Brett's homily last week about forgiveness. And I want to then kind of maybe tie a bow around those ideas to help us give some concrete ways of, you know, thinking about forgiveness. But I want to also then today do some preparation about not just forgiveness, but the sacrament where we often get forgiveness, which is the sacrament of confession, the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of penance, we call it. In that, we have been given, in the new translations of our liturgical books, new prayers, or actually old prayers, but some of them are retranslated to be more literal. So I have with me, for example, a paper that came from the, let's see here, the Federation of Diocesan Liturgical Commissions, and they have now listed off more literal translations of the act of contrition. They call it actually the prayer of penance here. You can't see that. Uh, it's in focus right there. Okay. And there's not just one, because some people say, well, I forgot the act of contrition. When, well, guess what? Here's five right here, and here's more up down to 11 of them. I can't really see that, but oh, there we go. There's 11 of them to long to really short, like this short one here. It says, Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Well, I want to kind of reflect with you on the very first one, which is one that you probably know, but with this new translation, uh, this new translation offers a little bit more meat and understanding, I hope. And I'd like to kind of pull that out for us today. Know this, that whatever act of contrition you know, it's all good. So if you're not doing these new translations, okay, you can make up a prayer as long as it's you know, asking for forgiveness, expressing your contriteness that you're sorry and you desire to do better you, and you ask God to help you with His grace to sin no more. So I want to read the first one and notice it sounds similar. So I'm going to pull it out, pull it out here. So here we go. It starts with, Oh my God. Right off the bat, we're setting things straight. God is first. I am less. I am not number one. And that's part of the problem sometimes with our sin, right? I have made myself number one, God's second or last. Oh my God, I am sorry and repent with all my heart. Notice it already just starts different. We might be familiar with, oh my God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart. This says, I am sorry and repent with all my heart. Repent. There's a lot of words here. So sorry, I think we've got a grasp of that. That's, I feel bad about what has happened, what I've done. And I repent. Repent means to turn 180 degrees away, to go the other direction, to, to walk it back with all my heart. Now, when you come to confession, maybe you're struggling with something, and it may not be with all your heart. Now, this is where some folks who are more philosophical might struggle because they have to say these words and have to have the absolute perfection in these meanings. A few people can come to confession with perfection on their heart for all of these things that I'm about to describe. And I want to encourage you, just come. Come as you are, come bumbling, come unaware of how to say some of these prayers uh, and, and struggling. It's okay. We'll help you. I am sorry and repent of all my, my I repent. I am sorry and repent with all my heart for, for all the wrong I have done and for the good that I failed to do. A little bit different than what we're used to, right? For the things I've done and not done. These are called acts of commission, something I have done, and omission I have not done. Because by sinning, I've offended you. Now, for me, when I read this, I get stopped in my tracks. Because how is it that God is offended? When I think about the word offended, I think about I've been hurt. Someone says something to me, they, they mock me, they call me names, whatever it might be. And I might feel bad about that. And I've been offended. Father Michael Schmitz in a video, hopefully I'll put it up here, but he talks about being in a state of offendedness. We're more akin to a victim of like a, an action that someone has done. But as Catholics, we 
shouldn't be offended. There are things that are objectively offensive, but we shouldn't be offended in one sense that is harmed by stuff. We could be angry. They could be hurtful words. But see, here's the hope and ideal is that we'd be so, so firm in our love with God, so open to His love that we would pity that other person, but we ourselves are not harmed. Because that's what God is. Because I was thinking, how is God offended, right? Well, the word offended, I had to look this up. I'm not a Latin expert, but the word offended, the etymology in Latin is of offendere, which means to strike against. So when someone is doing something that is offensive, they are striking against me or you or something, and they're offending something. You may, you may have uh, broken a law, and they might say, well, what, is the, uh, what offense did I do? In other words, what wrong did I do? See, with God, though, God is perfect. We may be doing things that are offensive to Him. We are striking out against Him. Is He harmed? This is a great mystery, right? God is perfect. God is all-loving, all-present, all-knowledgeable, all-powerful. How is it that He could be lessened by any of this? Well, He does care for us. We know that in Jesus, He was harmed physically on the cross, right? Very dramatically and whipped beforehand. But with God the Father, who this prayer is directed to, we are offending Him in a sense of we're striking against Him. His love is, though, perfect, constant, and unstoppable, no matter what we've done. His love is always there. And that's what we need to be secure in. But keep going. I want to go, go further. Because by sinning I've offended you, who are all good and worthy to be loved above all things. Boy, that's a tough one. Can we actually say that we love God? Can I say that I love God above all things all the time? No, I can't. I put other things before God, and that's why I'd be in the confessional, because something else has got more important, or I've gotten, a, I've gotten fixated on something. The new iPhone is coming out. My precious, right? <laughs> it's just a thing. No, when I, it's just a thing. That means it's not number one. I know that God is number one, and it's just a thing. But I can't say that's always been the case. Those shiny little toys, those technological wonders of the world, I'm using an iPhone to shoot all of my videos. So I use it for good things, but it can't be number one. The stuff can't be number one. God has got to be number one. Again, because by sinning I've offended you who are all good and worthy to be loved above all things. He's worthy to be loved, but I don't always love him. I firmly resolve that I have a strong will. That doesn't mean it's perfect. I may be firm, but sometimes I may be weak, but I desire deeply because I'm so broken, I'm not yet fully there. But I firmly resolve, with the help of your grace, and this is important, I firmly resolve something, but I have to do it with God's grace. To do penance, to sin no more, and to avoid the occasion of sin. I firmly resolve these things. Well, you may not be, or I may not be, when I go to confession, maybe we're struggling with an addiction. How can we possibly say we'll sin no more? Or even if it's not an addiction, I know I'm going to sin throughout my life. So how do we do this? Again, be careful not to be scrupulous about this. I firmly resolve. I desire, in other words, deeply. What is it? To do penance. What is penance? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. I got the catechism here. And it's funny, I happen to have this open just to the right paragraph. To penances, paragraph 1434. Many forms of penance in the Christian life. By the way, this is something that a priest can give you, a penance, an act to do, right? It's not a punishment. It's not intended to be, you've done a crime, here is the punishment. The Catechism reads, The interior penance of the Christian can be expressed in many and various ways. Scripture and the fathers insist above all in, on three forms, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, which express conversion in relation to oneself, to God, and to others. And there is the key, right? So whatever it is the penance would be, when given it, you need to be able to accept it. You, if, if it's something that's impossible to do, 
You can always ask the priest, please, I need a different penance that's not possible for me. But you might need to stretch yourself, because it probably is. But it's supposed to then express these things again. Conversion in relation to oneself. That is, the act will help me to change my ways. Conversion in relation to God, reorienting myself, making God number one, and to others, like the person maybe that I offended, or the persons I offended, or the persons that offended me. I'm continuing. Alongside the radical purification brought about by baptism or martyrdom, they cite as means of obtaining forgiveness of sins. Efforts at reconciliation with one another, with one's neighbor, tears of repentance, concern of salvation for one's neighbor, the intercession of the saints, and the practice of charity, which covers a multitude of sins. So these things may help obtain forgiveness. Again, that's paragraph 1434. And I encourage you to think about these things. I'll put that away there. Penance. So it's an act, another way of saying, I'm sorry, I need to do better. I Thank you, Lord. And it, one of the penances I often give is a penance of a prayer of thanksgiving. I mean, what can you do or I do to possibly pay back God? I don't know. Our offenses, the offenses of humanity are so great, I have no idea. But you know, when you're given a gift, an immense gift that is so humbling, what do you do? You're thankful. I'm thankful when I'm given a gift. So let's be thankful when we're offering our acts of contrition, or our penances, I should say. So anyway, I, I promise to uh, do penance, to sin no more. And that's a desire that, you know, with God's grace, is possible. On our own, it's not. And to avoid the occasions of sin, which is also a warning. We need to be mindful of the things that we, that we bump into or get close to that eke us towards sinning. I'll just do this little thing, and then that's okay. And then that leads to the next thing, and then pretty soon we find ourselves in the place of sin again. And it ends, through the merits of the passion of our Savior Jesus Christ, that's, see, in other words, all of this confession, all this stuff, forgiveness, is not on our merits, but on the merits of Jesus. He suffered on the, on the cross, crushing death, taking on our sins, destroying those, and opening life to us, giving us an option for a life everlasting in heaven. Through the merits of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, of our Savior Jesus Christ, Lord have mercy. Now, this ends with Lord have mercy. That's, that's the first version. So I want to encourage you, when you come to confession next, not to worry about memorizing this, though that's good. We have this there in the confessional. You can always make up a prayer. And again, there's 11 versions of a penance prayer or a prayer of the penitent. But to be mindful that we may do things that are offensive. We need to change our ways. I know I do. We may say it haphazardly or we may do things flippantly not thinking, and it could be offensive. We're not to offend other people. We are all weak in some way. I bet you there's something every one of us could get offended about and be hurt by. I want to encourage us, though, to be solid rock with Jesus, to make Him the bedrock of your set of the value you carry, the person that you are, your identity, in a person, a brother, a daughter, a sister, a child of God. Because when we're there, I know when I'm there, I'm firm in my faith. In other times, then I'm not. But when, I'm that, when I am firm with that re reality of being one with God, that His love is so powerful, nothing else can hurt me, then I have everything. And it's all because of Jesus, what He's done. He's given us this opportunity to be reconciled, to be forgiven. Okay, so those are some thoughts for you. I don't want to get any further. This video is going on long enough. I just want to encourage you. This weekend I'll be offering a, a, a reflection at the homily time about forgiveness. What is it? How can we forgive? Because then it seems like some things are almost impossible to forgive. Sometimes they seem to be. I'll see you this weekend. God bless you. Bye-bye.